Jesus, put your hands together for the King of Glory. You may be seated in the presence of God. You may be seated in the presence of God. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be here. Your, your joy, there is something wrong with it. I said, I'm excited to be here. I don't know about you, but as for me, my life will never be the same again. What a powerful testimony we had from our brother right there. One thing about God is he does not need any man's approval. For him to do a new thing in your life. He is God who sits alone in the circumference of himself. You can't vote him in. And you surely can't vote him out. He moves at his own time. And when God says it's your time. It does not matter who disagrees. It's your time. And when God says yes. Ain't no devil from hell. Ain't no witch from Chabalala. Or from Hamaskral. Or from Nigeria. That will say no. That's how powerful our God is. And there is no one like him. Glory be to God. I'm excited about today's service. And those that are tuning in and watching from home, it doesn't matter what platform you're watching us from, you're more than welcome to be part of this service. Distance is not a barrier, isn't it? Yeah. Distance is not a what? A barrier. In other words, you cannot be limited by the fact that you're not here with us. You are with us in the spirit. And it is the spirit of God that moves than the man of God just touching your head. I'm excited today. I'm excited today. I'm excited today. The devil is in trouble. The devil is in trouble. Woo, I feel power. I feel power. Woo, I feel power. You know, during worship, I wanted to stop the, the, the brother who was singing. And I said, let's, let's just close this service and go home. Everything is done. I was feeling so much anointing. And of course, today's service, we are dealing with what we call destroying evil foundations. 
And our title today is Altar versus Altar. So go ahead, get your notepad, because today I won't be preaching, but I will be teaching. And the reason for the teaching is so that you understand this, even when you get home, you can be able to teach your children. And your children will teach your children's children. So if you have uh, your notepad, go ahead, take it out. If you have your notebook, go ahead, take your notebook out. Make sure you have your Bible with you. I'm excited. And if you are coming for the very first time, welcome to new life, giving your life a new meaning. Your life will never be the same again. I know some of you, you came here to test the power of God in this ministry. Some of you, you came to witness, is it true? Is it false? You came at the right place. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Midrand, are you here? Yeah. <laughs> I had a vision three days ago. I saw a woman riding on a dark cloud. And she was riding on the city of Johannesburg. And then the spirit of the Lord opened my eyes and I could see her sitting on this cloud. And I kept on hearing, this is the strong man of Midrand. She was a woman, but I kept on hearing, this is the strong man of Midrand. And what she said when she saw me, she said, have you come to destroy us? I wish, I wish you were ready. And as I looked, I just lifted my finger and pointed at her. But surprisingly, the dark cloud started clearing up in KZN. Then it came down to the city of Johannesburg. Something is happening in the spirit. South Africa is about to experience a move that, has never ex that it has never experienced before. So it is in the book of Exodus without any waste of time. It is in the book of what? And I'll be taking my time to teach today. I won't be preaching. I won't be ministering. But I'll be just teaching today. So you might feel I'm a little bit slow. No, I won't, I'm not slow. I'm just teaching today. It's a very important subject that I want you to understand and fully understand. The book of Exodus chapter 20. And of course, I want us to stand up for the reading of the word. We are reading verses 24. And those there at the back right there, can you hear me? Can you hear me at the back right there? There we go. My God. My Jesus. Verse 24 we read. And the altar of the Aaron thou shalt make unto me. Uh -huh. And shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings. And thy peace offerings. Thy sheep and thy oxen. In all places where I will put my name, I will come unto thee. And I will bless thee. I will come unto you, and I will bless you. Lift up that power up high. There we go. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. I will do what it says I will do. I will do what it says I will do. Today I'll be taught the word of God. Today I'll be taught the word of God. My mind is alert. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. My heart is receptive. To receive the incorruptible word. To receive the incorruptible word. Of God. Of God. And my life. And my life. Shall never shall never ever 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 be the same again be the same again and if you believe that shout fire as you sit down fire. father as i decrease may you increase as i disappear may you appear not by might nor by power but by your spirit i stand against any spirit that causes people to mishandle misquote misjudge and misunderstand your word in Jesus' mighty name, breathe upon everybody. Spirit of revelation. In Jesus' name, say amen. amen. Ladies and gentlemen, it is very important that we understand that God reveals himself in seasons and uh, in a place. If you are looking for God, just check where you are. 
and also check what season you are in. Because without a season and without a place, God cannot reveal himself. And what we don't understand is most of our seasons are connected to people. Sometimes you might be waiting for time to say, in 2022, God is going to bless me. Yet that 2022 is Apostle Mies. Yet that 2022 is Pastor Jakes. Yet that 2022 is Pastor Bayanda. So whenever we talk about seasons, uh, we are not just talking about the time that you are thinking of. But we are talking about men called by God, appointed and anointed for such a time. So you might be saying, God, when is uh, my healing time coming? When is my deliverance time coming? And God looks at you and said, but I've released your time the day I released Apostle Mies to be in Midrand. So missing Apostle Mies in Midrand is missing your time. Hallelujah. So God forever and who forever reveals himself in a place and uh, in a season. And without any fear of contradiction, with thousands of people watching from all over the world, this is the place. And this is the time. As a brother there gave a testimony, we had so much testimonies, but because of time, you are going to testify to the right place at the right time. I love what he said. He said, I was, I'm here for a very short space of time. As a matter of fact, on our own, it's our third Sunday in Midrand. And he says, what I've seen, it seems like I've been here for a long time. Palina Mahansole Hega. This is the season. And this is the time. And one more thing before I come to your role. Is that God will forever reveal himself in different ways. Though he reveals himself in a season and in a time. In a place. He reveals himself in a different way. What that means, ladies and gentlemen, is that the way he revealed himself to that brother who testify is not going to be the way he's going to reveal himself to you. Oh, my goodness. Where is the church today? This side or this side? This side. Okay. So, on the other side, Pastor Bayanda, you can preach to them. I'll preach to my people here. So, God reveals himself in different ways. Hence, you need to understand, some, somebody's watching me now, not understanding how is altar versus altar building somebody in Christ. Is because doctrinal wise, we will never agree. And the reason why we'll never agree is because all our revelations as preachers are actually influenced by how we view the world. Number one. Number two, are influenced by our experiences. If I've never seen God healing somebody, it won't be easy for me to preach the God who heals. Maybe I thought you were my people. I made a mistake. These are my people. Are you my people now? Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. Materializing the supernatural into the natural. Hard copy. In the same Bible, you read about three Hebrew boys. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who, because they did not obey the new law that was placed by the king, they were thrown in the lake of fire. And the Bible says, while is they were in the fire, they walked around the fire. And those who were outside saw the fourth man. I feel like preaching, but I might as well as teach. 
You see, one thing about God is that sometimes you might not see him around you. But those that are watching your life, they can see the fourth man. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they could not see the fourth man. But those who were outside could see the fourth man. You might be saying, God, I've been churching all the time. I've been going to church for the rest of my life. Where are you? Trust me, your neighbors. Trust me, witches in your community. They can see the fourth man. Shout fire three times. So if you were to meet Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and say, tell me, what kind of a God do you serve? Just after their event, they will say, our God does not cause you to run away from fire. Our God will walk with you in the fire. One God, different encounters. And if you were to sit under them, they will contradict one another. And you can't blame Lord. He received an instruction from God, run away. And his message to the people is, when you see fire, run away. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they see people, they say, when you see fire, he will walk with you. If God will prosper me, and I see him in every area of my life, and I come to you and I say, he will prosper you too. Oh, you are You are not trying to, you are not getting what I'm trying to say to you. Please be seated. Maybe you're not understanding what I'm saying. In the same Bible, in the book of Judges chapter 14, you read from verses 6 and you go down to 16. There is a man called Samson who with his mother and father, they are on their way to Timna. They are on their way to see this beautiful lady called Delilah. And the Bible says, and a lion showed up and it roared against them. And the spirit of Jehovah came upon Samson. And Samson toward the lion as if he was toward a young goat. Now, if you met Samson after the event, he will have preached to you, my God will cause you to kill every lion that comes your way. Why? That's his encounter. That's his experience. But if you go to the book of Daniel, Daniel is thrown in the lion's den. And right in the lion's den, you don't see Daniel standing up, touring lions. You see him sitting, and he gives impartation to the lions. And the lions, they went on fasting. They said, we don't need meat, we need jello fries. Uh, you are not getting what I'm saying. So you meet Samson. Samson will say, my God will cause you to kill every lion. But when you meet Daniel, Daniel will say, my God will cause you to sit with the lions. And lions won't do anything to you. Same God. Different encounters. Hence, you never stand against somebody doing something that you don't understand. As long as Jesus is the center of it. And at the end of the day, it brings people to the knowledge of who they are. In Christ and spiritually. When we talk about altars. I do not care who agrees and who don't agree. The fact that somebody does not agree. It does not mean it's not so. The issue of altars is not the issue with those churches that love to pray for nothing. No. If you neglect or rather your ignorance to the issue of altars that we are talking about today. You, your ignorance will cost you and you will end up paying with your destiny and with your life. Let me repeat what I just said. Your ignorance on altars will cost you to pay with your destiny and with your life. 
Abanye benu here, you are swimming in a pool of confusion. You are left, you are right, but you are nowhere. Everything you see today in your life, there is a force behind it. If you are living a good life, there must be something that activated that good life. I don't know if I make sense to some people right here. There is a reason behind everything and anything happening in your life. Amen. Amen. I told people, I said the danger of being everywhere yet nowhere, it does not end with you. It goes to your children. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever we are dealing with and whatever we are fighting is not just about us. But their kids and their ch That's why the Bible, God is a God, is a generational God. He didn't just touch Abraham and said, in the times of Apostle Misa, I'll come back. No, he touched one man and through one man, everything was changed. When you read about the sons of Levi, the Bible says, and the sons of Levi were blessed while they were in the loins of Levi. They are not yet born. They are trapped in the loins of the father. But already they are affected by what affected the father. Uh, they, you see, they come out already. They are, they, are, they, they, they are benefiting. Most of the things that you are dealing with, they were transferred to you. Dealing with evil foundations today. Altar versus altar. And I'm about to tell you what an altar is. For those who don't know what an altar is. And for those that know what an altar is. Hear the context of today's message. In Christianity, you never get to a point where you don't deal with foundations. You never get to a point where you say, I've prayed for 50 years, I'm resting. That resting moment will destroy everything that you have been standing for for the past 15 years. You read the Bible in the book of 2 uh, uh, Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. It says, pray always. I said, Paul, what do you mean? Why do I have to pray? I went to the New Testament and, and in the book of Luke where Jesus said, men ought to pray and not to faint. Jesus said, men ought to pray, not to faint. Did you hear what he said? And that other one is saying, pray always. Another vision says, in a season, outside a season, pray. Because when it comes to the spiritual things, ladies and gentlemen, once you give a chance like this, your life is gone. You see, the enemy attacks you at the point of your ignorance. The moment you are ignorant of something, just that moment, the enemy slides in. The enemy can hit you now and erase everything that happened then. It's, it's a fight not just for destiny, but for generations. The day you became born again, you declared war against the kingdom of darkness. And the devil will never roll a red carpet and say, because you are born again, come and get your blessings. If it was so, ladies and gentlemen, there was no need for us to even gather. We'll just receive Jesus and stay in our homes. But because we need to be equipped to reach a level called the level of perfection. Am I with you? Yeah. Altars are so dangerous that even you yourself, you can be your own destruction. Because what is an altar? Write this one down. What is an altar? What is an altar? What is an altar? Ladies and gentlemen, an altar is a spiritual system of authorization. It's a system of authorization. A spiritual system of authorization. That's an altar. An altar is not just a monument or a structure, a building or stones that are gathered together. No, it's more than that. It's a spiritual system of authorization. We have been taught that whenever we deal with an altar, 
is just something that is built. No. Hence, we have what we call personal altars. You can write that one down. I'm about to make sense. Just flow with me. From personal altars, we have what we call family altars. Where you cannot see a physical structure or a monument, but your life is being affected by something. Ooh, I just said something right there. Are you writing? A platform. That's the second one now. A platform, an altar, is a platform where the realm of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm. Where the realms of the spirit makes contact with the physical realm on uh, 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 legal grounds. When we talk about an altar, it's a very simple way here. I'm not trying to be deep. I'm trying to be in the, in, uh, in the shallow. When we talk about an altar, it's when divinity, I feel power, is when divinity meets humility. It's when the supernatural meets the natural. It's where the supernatural meets the natural. What is an altar? An altar is a place where covenants are activated and maintained. An altar is a place where covenants are activated and are maintained. So you activate a covenant on an altar and you maintain it on an altar. The mystery of altars is one of the deepest things that a child of God, every believer should know. The mystery of altars. Because the devil does know. And the enemy that you are fighting, they fight you from the point of an altar. They fight you from an altar. Are we still together or you went home? You are still writing, right? For the last time. What is an altar? An altar is a spiritual portal. A spiritual portal. Hence we said, a person can be an altar because a person is the only entity that is allowed to summon the spiritual into the physical. The law of territory says, and the law of territory, so to say, it says that there is no spirit that can be on the earth without a body. Did you hear what I just said? So one can become an altar to accommodate a certain spirit. Because you already have a body. Sometimes you say no weapon formed against me. Yet you are the weapon. And I will show you today. I know you don't like the message today because you're not shouting. You're not jumping, right? But this is a message that will change everything about you. Can we now go deeper? Because I'm about to work the word now. So in the book of Exodus, we read, and God gave an instruction. You see, this instruction is so important that in Exodus chapter 3, Moses encountered God when he saw a burning bush and he came closer and God, Calibra, so I need to throw a revelation there. Can I throw it? And just pass by. Can I, can, I, can I just throw a revelation and pass by? Can I reveal as I? When Moses saw the burning bush, God himself, ay, 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 ay. the mystery was not in the burning bush. But God used the burning bush to get Moses' attention. But that's not, that was not his intention. For him to stack, stick around the burning bush. 
Just as Jesus used parables to get their attention, just to address his intentions. So God can use somebody as your friend to bring you here so that you can hear God's intentions concerning your life. Hallelujah. So Moses spoke to God, asked him, who shall I say has sent me? And God gives him all his names. No problem. But in chapter 20, verses 24, the same God who spoke to Moses, he says, now for me to come down, build me an altar. And when you build an altar, remember, ladies and gentlemen, it's a spiritual system of authorization. How can I put it? Hmm. An altar, you see this mic? How many of you see the mic? How many of you see the mic? Am I still with you or I lost you somewhere? Okay. The, this mic is so powerful that some of you, all of you can hear me without even raising my voice too much. Why? Because of the mic. But you need to understand that this mic, the reason why it's able to do what it was meant to do is because of an altar. What altar? I know you're thinking, new life altar. No. That's stupidity. And craziness. You need deliverance. This mic is powered by an altar called electricity. We switch off electricity. It cannot do what it's meant to do. Ah, you're not getting it. So when we talk about an altar, an altar is what empowers you to fulfill what you were meant to fulfill. An altar is what stops you from fulfilling what you are supposed to fulfill. Hence we say an altar visits an altar. Power visits power. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have God, you have the devil. Though the devil is not an enemy of God, never ever think God, the devil is the enemy of God, no. The devil is not an opposite of God. God is too big, he created the devil so he cannot be the opposite. Hence, when there was war in Revelation 12, verse 7, it's not God who fought the devil, but Michael. Why? Because Michael is an opposite of the devil. But God in his throne like this is not the opposite. Say, what's the opposite of God? Satan. Are you crazy? So if there is heaven, there is hell. If there is up, there is what? If there is black, there is what? So if there is a blessing, there is a what? Altar versus altar. Just give me five minutes, I'm done. I'm still laying my foundation. I want you to get this message. That you understand that we are not just fighting against flesh and blood. But we are in a war against principalities, powers, wickedness. You know what wickedness is? Wickedness is when somebody sees to it. That nothing goes right in your life. That's wickedness. Wickedness is when you step on somebody without even realizing you stepped on them. And they conclude you saw it and you did it purposefully. As a result, you need to pay for it. Wickedness. Where we come from, I don't know where you come from. I come from the bushes of Mpumalanga. How many of you know Mpumalanga? Just right here in Bumalang. I come from those bushes there. In the bushes of Bumalanga. In a place called Mkushu. Just near Bush Bakrish. Because most of you know Bush Bakrish. Just a few kilometers away from Nelspreit. We used to go to school like this. And we'll see people by the supermarkets. In fact, we, uh, they used to have this thing called free markets. When pensioners come to get their money. And you'll see a lot of people coming to sell all kinds of stuff. And right there, they'll be selling different bottles full of medicine. Telling you that if you drink this one, you'll go to the toilet three times. After three times, your enemy dies. They are selling it like this. I'm telling you. Dangerous stuff. And right there, they sell a lightning. 
Basha visatilo. Basha so five rand. They say five rand lightning. You ask and say, what is this lightning for? They say you buy it and you direct it. You just mention the name of the person. Wherever the person, whether it's raining, no rain, the lightning will do its work. You just pronounce the name. And right there you'll see people queuing for lightning. And that lightning is not to hit themselves. No, somebody is their target. And imagine you snoring, sleeping, no prayer, no nothing. You are joking. You are playing with destiny. You never put your hope on the, on the kind of a job you have. You can wake up in the morning and you are told it's no longer yours. Power of altars. With the right altar, you can bounce back anyway. You don't like my message. Let me close my Bible and go home. Should I close my Bible? I prayed for a woman in the year 2008. We were in her house. You know, back in the days, we used to uh, go to houses and minister to people and pray to, uh, for people right in their homes. You remember how we used to do it. Pastor Taylor, you know it better. You have been saved for years. You know it better. Not this, this time now, no. They're coming out of closet now. Two minutes prayer, you feel like you can prophesy. No, 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 no. Spend days in mountains, humbling ourselves before the Lord. We'll spend eight hours not asking for a car, but just asking for his presence. Immensing yourself. To say, God, I don't need a car. I don't need a house. I just need you. Uh, this time if I say, let us all pray, you'll hear God, that Lamborghini. You wonder why it's not coming. You are missing something very important. So we went to this woman. I did not get saved yesterday. All the people that are fighting Apostle Miss are wasting their time. Because if you have to stop me, you have to stop the foundation. And if you were not there when God called me and he didn't do a conference call, stop wasting your time. That's why I always tell my enemy, you came too late. You should have arrived then, not now. Now you are too late. Because now there is MJ. Too late. Too late to fail. Are you getting what I'm saying? I went to this house with, you know, back then, with brothers in the Lord. We got there. This mama says, I've not been sleeping. And we were God's generals. You know, young, you know, back in school, but you know what? We are God's generals. Yeah, we, got, we carried our Bible and our armpits like this. Not ashamed of the gospel. We put it under... Uh, you don't know. You, you carry iPads, is it? You don't know what I'm talking about. No problem. Put our Bibles like this. In and out of season. Got in that house and said, Mama, what is your problem? She said, man of God, I don't sleep. We said, what's the problem? She said, I hear a sound of something running. We said, no problem. Today is the end of it. And you know, sometimes you can address things because you are used to address them. And right there, Nobody caught the frequency of what was happening in the spirit. We are just talking to her mama as we pray. It's gone. Don't worry. And she had a room divide. You know them room divides. Now you no longer put room, the room divides. You just need a wall and you plug your TV. It's nice. Back then, for a place to look nice, you needed a room divide. A three piece. One, two, three. She has a pictures in the room divide. Nice pictures. Where she was graduating, she has put it there. No problem. And we sat in her couches like this. She had, she had taxes, this woman. No problem. And I remember I stood up. Because I started prophesying at a very young age. I stood up. I said, eh, that's hey, the Lord. Because she had also another problem with the taxi that was involved in, in an accident. And she had to pay a lot of money. I said, that's hey, the Lord. You will not pay it. I remember that's what I said. As I sat down, another brother stood up and said, that's hey, the Lord. And gave a prophecy. He's a forgot. I remember mine. We were three. Another one stood up and said, That's say the Lord. And spoke about her womb. And it was very accurate. No problem. We started praying. We put her there. And we did a chain prayer. We were three. She was in the middle. Pala. We started praying. Hey, Shaliga Bahanto. We started releasing power. But we did not know. 
that at that moment, we were actually in an altar of prayer, right? But, oh my God, at that moment, we did not know that there was another altar that was speaking. You know what happened? After, while we were praying, do you want to know? Uh, you, you don't want to know. Uh, how many of you say you want to know? Uh, the people there at the back, they don't want to know. It's okay, let me leave it. Do you want to know at the back there? But act like you want to know because I say you want to know, you're like. <laughs> While it's, we're praying like this, a lightning came in. Daylight, sun is there. Watch this. It came in like this. Passed in the middle where we were praying like this. It went, it hit her picture where she was graduating. We came out of the spirit, we went back in the spirit. <laughs> We're like, what happened? When we realized it had messed the glass up, it hit the glass, it hit the picture. And the sound, bah! And we were like, Kala. We started praying more. We started praying more. As we were praying, a big cat just came out of a room. And she said to me, I cleaned that room. I bathed in the room. I cleaned the whole room. There was no cat. A big cat. It's not even a black one. A brown cat. Because some of you, you think, oh, black cats. No, it was even a brown one. A brown cat ran like this. And because she had a tile. This woman was doing very well. She had a tile. The, the cat was even slight, like struggling to come out. The, the, the curve that the cat took, you'll say it was need for speed. It went, whew, when we went out like this, the cat was, she had a stop nonsense. The cat was nowhere to be found. Gone. And from that day, I remember she also had a problem with the husband. The husband had been gone for seven years. I think on the Wednesday of that day, of that week, the husband came back home. Why? Because we were dealing with an altar. If an altar can summon God, oh, you are not hearing what I'm saying. If God says, build me an altar and I will come down. Do you know that the devil has nothing? And the devil owns nothing. But everything he does, he copies God. God says healing and he says diseases. He just twists it. He just twists everything. God says blessing and the devil comes and curses. And God and the devil sits down and checks how God blesses you. And use the opposite of that to curse you. Uh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. He has nothing new, but he copies God in order to push his agenda. So if God will bless Abraham, and through Abraham, all his children's children are blessed, guess what? The devil messes your father, so that through your father, you, you are messed up, your children is, are messed up too. One time a woman came to me, in New Life there in Val, have you ever heard of Val? Do you know the lion of Val? Do you know the lion of Val? You are just looking at the lion of Val here. If you hear Val, nobody mentions Val and they don't mention my name. <laughs> I'm telling you. Power! Somebody say power. The lion of Val. Yeah, Val. They know. Let, let them lift up this restriction and we go back. We're going in the stadium now. I'm telling you. Now watch this. <laughs> Are you still here? Oh, you, you went home. A woman came in the church in the old building. She said, man of God, I'm tired. I said, you're tired of what? She said, of my husband. My husband is beating me day and night. He said, Apostle, I'm here so that I can tell you as my leader and as my man of God that I'm separating with that man. I said, since you're telling me, I'm sure you're not expecting me to say anything. He said, no, 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 you are a, you are, you are a prophet, tell me. I said, but you're telling me, what do I have to say? You said you, don't, you, you are here to let me know, so you told me. Do you want me to speak? Or I should just leave it. She said, speak. I said, you are crazy. Call your husband. Let him meet me Monday. 
came like this. When they came, they were together like this. I said, woman, you see, the biggest problem you have is the problem that your mother had. The reason why your mother separated with your father is because you, you lie too much. Your mother lied too much. And there were problems of anger. The same thing is in you. You think this one is beating you. Say, have you beat this? Says, no. We just argued. I didn't even touch her. Hey, the argument to her, it was beating. But she did not understand. Watch this now. I want to show you something. You know, in her mind, the way she told me. She said, I, want, I, I even want, if he was not a Christian, I was going to open a case for him. Watch this now. The, the guy said, I've never even beat this woman. I've never in my entire life beat my wife. I've been angry at her, and whenever I'm too angry, I just leave. I said to her, you lie too much. That's what costed your mother's marriage. And what you don't know is, as your mother left, you are leaving too. It's an altar. Your children will not stay too. It's an altar. Your children's children will not stay. It's an altar. Somebody must put an end to this. It's either you put an end to it or you give it platform to continue. Just as poverty, just as sicknesses, just as diseases, just as confusion and lack of direction and lack of progress and the spirit of poverty. God says, build me an altar, I will come down. Why? Because an altar is a system of authorization. In another words, in, when we say in the realms of the spirit, you are thinking we are talking about angels. No. Uh, you don't like my message today. The realms of the spirit is not just angels that are in the realms of the spirit. Even demonic powers are in the realms of the spirit. When we say in the realms of the spirit, can I prophesy? In the realms of the spirit, you are thinking we are talking from a place where there are angels. Hallelujah. No. Even dim That's why the Bible says we fight not against flesh and blood, but principalities in heavenly places. Another vision says in spiritual places. Another one says in high places. What, where are high places? It's not like you're going to fly with a helicopter there or a plane and say, I'm in high places. No, not those kind of high places. It's a spiritual atmosphere. Then from there, you can download good, you can download evil. Hence, there are people who prophesy, yet they don't believe in God. Why? It's because they are prophesying from that realm with what, and how do they have access to that realm? It's what we call strong spirit. <laughs> I'm telling you, you people, if you know the mystery of altars, so in that realm there, demons are there, principalities are there, powers and wickedness are there, making sure on a 24-7 job to just check, not you, you are a small baby, if they dealt with your mother, if they dealt with your grandmother. They are checking the altar that is controlling the whole entire thing. They don't care how you shout. They don't care how you dance in the church. Their main concern is, do you temper with the altar? Because if you destroy this, you have destroyed everything. The Bible says in the book of 1 Kings, Kala Parina The Bible says in the book of 1 Kings chapter 13, there arose a man of God from Judah. And he lifted up his voice and said, Oh, altar, altar. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Listen to me. A man of God, we are not told where he comes from. We are told God brought up a man of God. And the first thing that this man of God says, he says, Oh, altar, altar. I stand against thee in the name of the Lord. So before he says what he wants to say in Judah, he knows. Let me speak to what controls Judah. Some people are like, but I'm born again, Apostle. Apostle, I'm saved. How can now an altar affect my life? That's a good question. Let me now explain it to you. 
bit by bit so that you understand. We are in Christ, isn't it? And in him we live. In him we walk. And in him we have our identity. But what you don't know is, uh, when you are a child of God, can I reveal as I hear? There are stages in this thing of God. It's not a one-time thing and then you can just uh, speak and things happen. No. Hence, Paul says, uh, when I came to you, I thought by now you'll be teachers. But you are still feeding on milk. Teaching the basic principles of salvation. And he says, whoever is a babe is unskillful to the word of righteousness. Now, Paul is telling us that there are babes in Christianity. But what makes one a babe and remain a babe? What they know. You cannot fathom what you don't know. The more you know, the more you function. The less you know, the less you function. The reason why we have fivefold ministries is so that you can be equipped and be brought to a dimension called perfection. But in equipping you, there are mysteries that you need to know. Because if you are ignorant, the enemy will attack you there. Hence Paul says, we are not ignorant of his devices, lest he takes advantage of us. Then you have a stage called technon. A technon is when you are behind, you are in between a babe and a matured person. You are, you are still growing. Then we have whoers, which is sons. As many as are led by the spirit of God, these are whoers, sons of God, matured. I know you still don't understand. John 1, 12 says, to them that received him, he gave them what? Power to become. Not to be. You didn't hear it. To become sons of God. To them that received him, he gave them power to become sons of God. Not to be sons of God. Meaning before you, be, you are a son of God, it's a becoming thing. It's a process. You are becoming one. Hallelujah. So just because one just got saved today, it doesn't mean, boom, that's it. No. The Bible says, by knowledge shall the just be delivered. So we know that as a born again, I cannot be possessed. But that does not mean I won't be attacked. And that does not mean I don't have things that are attached. I'll give you another example. When a child is sick, in most cases, even women, when they go and check or something, or they're about to give birth or anything like that, they normally ask you, eh, is there anybody in your house with a heart attack? No. You know, they are trying to find out because they know that this thing is genetic. So even in the things of God, listen to me, when you get born again, your spirit is the one that gets saved. Your soul is being saved. Your soul is not saved. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you thought your soul is saved, you are joking. It's not. It's being saved. When you hold on until the last day, that's when your soul will be saved. That's why the Bible speaks about renewing of your mind. Why? Because your, your mind is attached to your soul. So you renew it every day. And your soul is connected to your past. Remembers your past, yet your spirit remembers the future. Are you still with me? But at the end of the day, remember, it's a spirit possessing a morality. Yet they are born again. And when they go to church, they hear some funny, funny messages where Jesus did everything. It's a time of grace. Even if you do it, already you are forgiven. What nonsense is that? Fear of God is no longer there. People are not taught. I, I'm not against grace. I'm a grace man. I understand grace. Hallelujah. But there are messages that turns you into a spiritual sanctified CC. Turn with me into the book of Genesis. I don't know if people, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to minister to you, but I feel this is a long thing. Eh? I'm closing. I'm closing now. I'm closing now. And I want to ask you a question as we go to Genesis. Who put you in a mess that you are in? It's just a question. Who put you in a mess that you are in? Genesis chapter 8. And for your own information, 
wondering, where are altars in the New Testament? When you read the book of Acts, Paul says, we came across altars with strange names. Another vision says, with unknown names. And we opted to destroy them. When God gave an instruction to the children of Israel, the time the Midians, in the times of a man called Gideon, uh, uh, they had sinned against God and God allowed the enemy to oppress them and all of that. When God appeared to them, the first thing that God says, for me to rectify this, I need an altar. And guess what? Later on in the book of Deuteronomy, when Moses, now they were taking over territories and places, God says, when you get there, destroy their altars. If God is so powerful, why will he be bothered by another altar? It's because when there is an altar, it summons another power. And he himself is summoned by an altar. And that's the law of territory. Hence, a dog cannot breathe inside water. It's a law of territory. A fish cannot survive outside water. The law of territory. We are quiet now. The book of <laughs> digesting, eh? <laughs> Pastor Teles says, ah, we are just digesting, Major. Okay, the book of Genesis, I'm closing. Sister Sidness, are you hearing this? Okay, the book of Genesis chapter 8, I want to show you something very powerful. Verse 20. I want you to look at, look, at, look at it in your Bible. Verse 20, it says what? And Noah built it. My vision says build it. All right? And Noah built an altar unto the Lord. I know you know Noah who built an ark. Wait a minute. He also built an altar. After God saved him, he went to build an altar. <laughs> and Noah built an altar unto the Lord. And took every, okay, every clean beast and whatever and whatever and whatever and offered on the altar. Chapter 9 verse 1. It says what? Ah, you're looking at it. Come on. You don't even have to flip. And God blessed Noah. Ah, wait. Let's go to chapter 8 verses 20. Something is missing there. And Noah and his sons built an altar. Ah, does it say that? Amen. But it says who? And Noah built an altar unto the Lord. Their sons are not involved. Who's building an altar? Noah. Noah. But chapter 9 verse 1 says what? And, and God, God blessed, blessed Noah, Noah and, and his sons. sons. Who's building an altar? Noah. Who's getting blessed? Noah, Noah and, and his, his sons. Because you might be saying, I've never built any altar, any evil altar. Even the sons of Noah never built any altar. But what their father did. The Bible says in the book of Exodus, because of the sins of your forefathers, I'll punish you. Punish your children. Punish your children's children. It's not a joke. These things are real. Can I go deeper a little bit? You all don't like me today, do you? When you read the Bible, you realize that there is a man called Bartimaeus. In the book of Mark chapter 10, verse 49, it says, and there was a blind man called Bartimaeus. Wait a minute, Mark. I know Mark was not a disciple, but he was a student of a disciple. I know his writing might not be accurate as Matthew, but there is a problem here. There is tension in the text. Why are you saying there was a blind man called Bartimaeus? Because Bartimaeus, that's not his name. My father's name, some of you know it, my father's name for the very first time. My father's name, like his name, he had two names. The other one you won't understand, Foco. <laughs> so I might, give you, I might as well as give you the name that you'll understand. My, fa my biological father's name was called Doctor. His biological name was Doctor. Imagine they say there was uh, a, a rich man called Son of Doctor. Uh, you wanted me to use a blind man example. <laughs> On me. You are crazy. Never. It's more like some of you, the reason why you are struggling, you are in poverty, is because every time at work, even when they give example of somebody who's poor, they use you. 
They say, let's say you're poor. Yeah, 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 it's just an example. Let's say I was poor. Even in an example, I can't. Because words are a reality. Keep your poverty to yourself. Even in your, Why me in an example? Why can't I be rich? Why can't I be the rich one in the example? You need to be prophetic, not pathetic. Amen. Amen. So it doesn't make sense. And there was a rich man called son of doctor. Ah, ah. It says there was a blind man called son of Timas. Because it says Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was not his name. The word Bar means son of. Hence, when Peter's name was changed, it was Simon Bajona, meaning Simon, son of Jonah. So even this guy, he was blind and his name is not written. But his father. His father is not the one who received the miracle. But the name of the father is the one appearing. But we still don't know who's the, this blind man. There was a blind man, son of Timas. Ah, ah. Can you just give us his name, Mark? We need to know who was blind. Not Putty, whose son was this. But watch this now. The Bible wants you to study and understand what happened to the father. Why will the Bible pin the father, include the father, mention the father? It means whatever this young man was dealing with started there. So when you study scriptures, you realize his father was also blind. So what conquered his father, conquered him. But now because it's a battle of altars and where it comes from, it's a battle of foundations, ladies and gentlemen. He's a son of who? Timas. His name is not mentioned. And when Jesus is passing like this, and the Bible says, and the blind man had that who? Jesus. He didn't hear anything, but he had Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. He had Jesus is passing by. He didn't hear anything. He just had Jesus. But when he called Jesus, he did not say Jesus. He said, Jesus, thou son of David. I'm a son of Timas. This is where it began. Thou son of David. Foundation versus foundation. Uh, I'm on my own here today. Power versus power. I refuse for my children and for my children's children to suffer things that my great grandfather did. The first thing that I did when I came to understanding altars, I separated myself with my family altars. I did not change them. Uh -uh. There are things you cannot change, but there are things you can separate them, yourselves from them and build your own altar. Hence, every family here must have a family altar. Do you know what forms communities? Communities, they don't just happen. Communities are formed by families. What forms a society, the shape and the direction that the society takes is something that is projected by families. Uh -uh. So if we say this community, nobody studies and finish, it's not the community. It's families in that community that have adopted one spirit and as a result, those families projected that, that whoever comes to that community is subject to that. So your children might be affected by a community altar if you don't understand family altars. Because it's in family altars. How do we build a family altar? A family altar is when you decide, uh, Pastor Taylor, as a man, and say, every Wednesday, come rain, come fire, come thunder. We sit on this thing. <laughs> One starts a song for two seconds or three seconds, not for me. One has to pray. And one has to minister for five minutes. What you are doing right there, you are erecting a family altar. I told you that altars are not physical monuments. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's a system of authorization. And when your children now start to see what's happening, and every Wednesday there is prayer, because it is in that altar that your children are blessed. It is in that altar that you are able to say, God bless my children. Protect my children. Protect my husband. My marriage. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And from there, it does not end. Even when they go out, there is an altar in the community. But they have a family altar. So what affects other children in that community cannot affect your child. Are you listening to what I'm saying? 
And not only that, your children now, because these things are generational, they sit down with their children and say, every Wednesday, we sit here. And their children's children never play with prayer. Do you know what the Bible says about Jabez? Hey! Hala Hanso. And a man called Japhta. The Bible says in Jabez, in the book of Second Chronicles, and Jabez, which meant sorrow. The mother said, I bore this son in sorrow. And the same Bible says, and he was favored. Eh? And Jabez was favored amongst his brothers. And the mother said, I called him Jabez because I bore him in sorrow. How is he favored? What is he was born in sorrow? That scripture started wrong. It was supposed to say, and Jabez, who was born, who was born in sorrow, was highly favored amongst the brothers. But it started by saying he was highly favored. As you go down and he says, he was sorrow. Now you are not getting it, but one time you will get it. <laughs> And what did he do? What is he was given the name sorrow? As a matter of fact, the name Jabez does not mean sorrow. It means sorrow maker. <laughs> Meaning Jabez will enter a place like this. The lights will start breaking. And some of you, you are like that. Wherever you enter, things go wrong. And you are wondering why. In this relationship, it does not matter how good something is just wrong. And you realize later sometimes, hey, that was my mistake. Some of you are propelled by anger, not understanding that anger is an altar. One time like this, I wanted to fight this other young man. When I was born again. Hey, me. Jesus. Jesus Christ. It's just that, you know what, as you mature, you really, really mature. One time this other guy, hey, messed my sister up. You know, these sisters, she was just starting to get in a relationship, my older sister. Back then, I was way younger than her. This guy, my sister came crying. I, I was born again, I was a preacher, they knew me everywhere. My, I said, what's wrong? He said, who, who beat me? And the name of the boy was Emmanuel. God with us, imagine. I don't think that boy knew what his name meant. I stood up like this. I said, I'm going to beat up that guy. I went, I was very angry. As I was going there, then there was this other mama, like this other mama. She was, she was you know, back in the days, we hear people preaching. She was preaching. Jesus is coming back. Do away with anger. <laughs> I slowed down. <laughs> I slowed down a little bit. When Jesus comes, what is you are full of that anger? You'll go to hell. I said, huh? I'm not going there again. <laughs> you know what saved me? A message. Are you listening to what I'm saying? If a, you see, I know you don't understand the importance of, of what I just said. I was saved by a positive message. Are you listening to what I'm saying? If maybe I met another altar, Say, so, yeah, you're doing the right thing. Let's go and mambaraskati that guy. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? In every good, there is evil. And one thing about you, you are being pumped up by what you give attention to. Here's the miracle in what I'm saying. Yes, I think about three years, not, not three, three days, not years later, three days. Now the guy is a man of God as well. Three days after, my sister, they separated with that guy, right? As they separated, that guy came to me. We're in a field playing soccer said, I want to be born again. If I had beat him or fought him, do you think he was going to be born again? <laughs> do you see that? Some of you, you are like Jabez. And the reason why your things are not going better is because even what you feed yourself with, they are adding in you being a soul maker. Jabez will enter here and everything will go wrong by fire and by power. If there is any foundation fighting your life, fighting your destiny, fighting your children, fighting your progress, fighting your money, 
fighting your success fighting everything about you let it catch fire shout fire sit down please i'm closing now as you see i'm closing my bible this series is too long what does an altar do an altar limits people an altar garages people an altar will put you on a quarantine a language that everybody will understand you know when somebody is in a quarantine bo mama is when somebody has got an infectious disease this disease is contagious or it can infect other people do you get what i'm saying so what they do is they separate the person and close up the person an altar will quarantine you where others are moving fast you'll be moving with the speed of a toy toy what takes others three years it will take you 30 years Ladies and gentlemen, building at the age of 87 is not an achievement as a child of God. The devil is a lie. I don't care who's watching. It's a sign of delay. Say amen. amen. Altars are so dangerous that even when Elijah is the first, you see, I, I, I highly, uh, 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 you know, stand against anybody who does not, you see, who does not want to minister on altars. The Bible says our prayers, God's throne is here. Do you know that the Bible says in the book of Revelation 13 as well, and chapter 16, it says the throne of God is here. And right in the throne of God is an altar. Oh, yeah. Our prayers go through an altar. They, our prayers are offered on an altar. Do you know that? In the book of Revelation, God is sitting like this and right in front of him is an altar where our prayers are offered. That's how powerful an altar is. It because it 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 summons the spiritual. It's where divinity and humility. It's where God, the spiritual and the natural, meets. Jesus, after he died, where did he offer his blood? On an altar, as a high priest in the book of Hebrews. It was a result of an altar that there was virgins crying, and it was a, a, because of an altar that forgiveness started speaking. altar. And altars is not, a, it's not even in the law. It's, it's beyond, the, it's bigger than the law. Abraham was the first man to build an altar, according to what we know. But if you are going to go deeper in the scripture, the first man to teach his children how to build altars was Adam when he taught Cain and Abel how to build altars and to summon God. One did it right and one did it wrong. Imagine Adam, a man who understood all mysteries, taught his children to build an altar. Abraham, you are blessed. Okay, I'm building an altar. And you say, I'm a seed of Abraham. I'm a new creation. I'm a seed of Abraham. I come from the loins. And your, your, your father Abraham tells you, I build an altar. That's why things are like this. If I didn't, things would not have went this way. Altar visits an altar. They are evil altars. There are national altars, family altars, personal altars. You wonder why you always have a headache. It's beyond. There is something that powers that headache. You work hard like a donkey, but you don't see any harvest. You work like a donkey, you eat like an ant in a small, small measure. This month you plan and say, you know what? My problem is I overspend. You cut all the expenses. When that month come, you look, you cut the expenses. Where did the money go? Altar. Do you know that there are people who don't earn what you earn? But because they understood the mystery of altars and they rectified things that had to be rectified, they are able to take their children to school. They are able to take care and, and still feed everyone in their family who's not themselves. You, earning more. You know, once you don't destroy evil altars, even if you go to UK, it will still follow you there. I've seen people crossing borders saying, if I get it there, my life will be better. This is more. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? I feel like 
talking to somebody right here. Libra suba parina antala haso pahi. This life is a jungle. Indeed, it's the survival of the fittest. Hunt or be hunted. I said, hunt or be hunted. But I'm a child of God. <laughs> I'm a child of God. Me, I'm a child of God. Nothing will touch me by any means. And God comes to you through a man called Paul and said, put on the arm. Ah, I thought you were a child of God. He says, put on the armor. And doesn't end there. He says, the whole armor. Ah, meaning some of you can put a helmet and leave a breastplate. So he says, make sure, because once he, you leave a breastplate, he will hit your heart. Once you leave a helmet, he will hit your head. Once you leave the belt of truth, he will strip you naked. Do you get what I'm saying? Take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And most of you, you end there. Verse 17 says, praying always in the spirit with all kinds of prayers. A man called Japhtha, the Bible says, and Japhtha prayed. And God had Japhtha and blessed Japhtha. And not only Japhtha, even a man called Jabez. And the Bible says, and Jabez prayed unto the Lord. And said, oh God of Israel, increase my territory. And the Bible says, and God had these prayers and increased his territory and blessed him. A man who was known to be a sorrow. A sorrow maker. When you read the Bible in the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 2, it says, and there was a place called Japhtha. A place called Jabez. Uh, you didn't know that, right? Okay. I will show you because I know it's your first time to hear it in the Bible. Calibro Sata. Open 10 with me, Second Chronicles. I'm closing. That's my last verse, I promise you. But I feel something is happening in the spirit. In the realms of the spirit. Did I say it right? Something is taking place right there. Did I say it right in Zulu? Even Lagamoya. Did I say it right? How do you say it? Huh? How do you say in the realms of the spirit in Zulu? Ezwen. Ezwen Lagamoya. Exactly. Something is happening. Ezwen Lagamoya. Your family altars are angry. You are hearing this message. Some of you are feeling bored. It's not you. It's an altar. You feel like I need to go. It's an altar. Second Chronicles chapter 2 verse 55. Let's read this one. Let's hear. Let's hear. What does the Bible say? Uh, Second Chronicles. Wait. Just hold on. Kali bro satalahaya. I want to show you something right now. Let's start with chapter first, and as a matter of fact, first, first Corinthians, first Corinthians, Chronicles, sorry. First Chronicles, chapter 2, verses 55. It says what? And the families of the, are you there? Amen. It says his name. He was given the name because he was, a, he was born in sorrow. And the mother died. But his prayer changed an individual to be an institution. You didn't hear what I just said. Intercession, the power of prayer, changed an individual to become an institution. That a city was called after him. Yet his roots were so bad. But because of his prayer life, he reversed things. Don't play with prayer. Hence, we talk about building an altar of prayer. Some of you, the Spirit of the Lord told me last week, as a matter of fact, and I'm dealing with this next week, Sunday. The Spirit of God has been waking you up 2 a.m. And some of you, the only thing that you think of is, I'm, I'm awake so that I can go to the bathroom, to the toilet. And yet, there are things that God has been revealing to you 
Because last week God told me, last of last week, last week was, last of last week, God told me and said, in the next 21 days, I'll be waking all spiritual people between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. Because there, there are activities that are happening so that we can be able to accommodate the message that God is releasing for the coming of the Lord Jesus. And he said, from 2 a.m. to 3 a.m., I'll be waking up spiritual people. Watch men and watch women, intercessors. You, you are waking up, you don't even understand what's going on. Prayer is a necessity for survival. One can teach, one can preach and, and perish, but you can't pray and perish. Teaching, we can all do it. Preaching, we can all do it. But prayer, prayer. Where you get in and say, I'm cooking myself today. I'm switching off WhatsApp. I'm switching off Facebook. Because Facebook is full of monitoring spirits. Say, I have 5,000 friends. Out of all the 5,000, 4,000 are monitoring spirits. I used a CCTV TV cameras for the kingdom of darkness just to check your progress. Some of you are bewitched here for things that you're not supposed to be bewitched for. You posted next to a car in the mall that was not yours. And somebody on Facebook said, Yer. Somebody's angry at you went to an unholy place to bewitch you for a car that was not yours. You are suffering for things that you, you don't even have it as yet, but already they hammered you. Ladies and gentlemen, I told you before, you know my messages. You know my messages. But in this season, God ministered one thing. This is Africa. Amen. And in Africa, don't joke, my friend. In Africa, don't joke, my friend. There is no time to, be, to, to act like an American here. To act like you're somebody from England here. The demons of England are not the demons of Africa. Gafiwala. Survival of the fittest. I'm telling you now. I'm telling you now. I said I'm telling you now. Father, in the name of Jesus. By the authority of the Holy Ghost. We stand against any evil altar, any evil foundation. By the power of the name Jesus, we destroy evil foundations. Foundations that we know nothing about. We destroy them by fire. In the name of Jesus, for your word declares uh, you are a consuming fire. And let every altar catch fire. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I want us to pray. Listen to me. I don't want you to mama. Kala brazubla kadele men sevri kataya. Parina sotele mehega. Gina sotala pariga dohosa. Somebody open your mouth and begin to pray. Take the next 30 seconds in prayer. Rakatala pasoba. Ripa takatala hasiato Renini ni manso baria atale Rekina manso bractale Bracabonda bracatisha Pera saliga bahansata Ele bronsa tisha oklane Rima mama saya Repa tapatadila haso Zini basaya Ele masubla ka In the name of Jesus Hey Hey, lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voices and pray. Lift up your voices and pray. Jata la parasova, rico toloma sia, rene manso la kina ma anta, repale ele monsaka, jata la bronsa tila baya. Reko tolomon sa praktale Riku subayata Rebetele banso Malibro satiga Ranemenso taliga bahaya Yeah Yeah In Jesus name 
We pray. You know what's happening? That is so you know what's happening? What is as you are praying, as you are praying, remember how you used to pray. That altar that you used to build in prayer is now taking over the altar that was now operating. Something is happening. Ah, katala basoya, rita katala mahasiato, repini manana masele. Open up your mouth and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Shala kataya, pere ketele bahasu. Lift up your voices and pray. Lift up your voices and pray. Yeah. Yeah. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. We cannot say we are done. Because when they build altars against you, when they build altars against your progress, they don't do a two minutes thing. They dwell in it. They make sure that you are destroyed completely. Back to the sender. In the name of Jesus. Kalabasoya. Open up your mouth. Lift up your voice. Lift any spirit of anti-progress in my life. Die. Come on, lift up your voices. Lift up. Lift up your voices and pray. Ladron Sotokopa. Rico Tolomasia, Rekina Katala Brasova, Intakuva, Malipro Sotokobahaya, Marentele Bebebe Suya. Come on, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Yeah. In Jesus' name. Amen. We pray. That is so. I feel power here. I said I feel power here. I said I feel power here. The devil is a liar. The devil is a bastard. The spirit of God. The spirit of God. Is even breaking. The spirit of prayerlessness. Some of you you used to pray. But you don't pray no more. You used to fast. You don't fast no more. You used to humble yourself for days and pray and seek God in prayer. You don't do that no more. But the spirit of God is breaking that spirit of prayerlessness. Oh hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Take it down. I want everybody to hear me. The measuring stick. Or the accurate measuring stick for your spiritual growth is not Bible study. It's your prayer life. If your prayer life has a problem, your spiritual life has a problem. And as we are erecting and raising an altar of prayer, something is happening. If you have a husband, this is the right moment to say, I pray for my husband. I pray for everything that has to do with him. I pray for my relationship. This spirit of anger upon my wife, upon my husband, it is not a right spirit. I stand against this altar. In Jesus' name. I want to give you 30 seconds to do what I call spiritual investigation. Ah, yeah, yeah. If you are here, shout fire. Shubile manj. It's power versus power. I said, Shubile manj. Some of you, you are equipped. You are beautiful. You have the qualification. But there is no progress. You have the experience. You attend seminars. You attend workshops. You attend everything. But there is nothing. I want you to do spiritual investigation. 
I want you to do what? Spiritual investigation. Kala plantolo maridi di di tai. Paro ayina hanso le vega. Jiribasaya aligo savrina antapai. Listen to this. I want you to do what? Talk back to me. I want you to do what? Spiritual what? Investigation. I want you to do spiritual investigation. What, what do I want you to do? Spiritual investigation. Now, in this spiritual investigation, this is your first instruction today. The work of God and the things of God are built on instructions. You didn't hear what I said. Everything about God is built on instruction. Hence, the prophetic is more sharp and accurate and will come to pass when one follows instruction. Do you hear what I just said? It's based on instruction. Full stop, no comma, no exclamation. So the first instruction today is what? I want you to even when you get home, you remember it. The first instruction is what? Spiritual, spiritual investigation. investigation. Now, in this spiritual investigation, I don't want you to do generational investigation, but I want you to do what? Spiritual investigation. I want you to just take 30 seconds in your mind. Trace back where you come from. Trace your mother. Trace your father. Trace your, 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 your aunties. Look at their lives. And move back from your grandmother to your great-grandmother. Then from your great-grandmother, look at her life. Look at your, the life of your great-grandfather. How many wives he had? What happened? Are you listening to what I'm saying? And from there you move back. And you sit like this. In the spirit. And you check your life. And if there's any pattern. That is joining you with that. We are going to destroy it. 30 seconds. I want you to take 30 seconds. No one is praying. No one is doing anything. It's spiritual investigation. Navigate, prophesy in your life. Look, go back, check. That's what the prophetic is all about. To go to the past and come to the present. You see, where the prophetess is there. The prophetess, she's investigating. So, the mother of the child, don't even uh, worry. The, the, the prophetess is ministering with us. If I had a problem, I would have told you. So, don't worry about the child. The child is spiritual. Check your life. Check your finances. Check your mother. Check what your mother used to cry about or what she's crying about. Stress. Now you have stress too. Her feet. Her, all, all her feet. Her body. If there is no problem with her back, there is a problem with the feet. If there is no problem with the feet, there is a problem with the heart. If there is no problem with the heart, there is a problem with the legs. And right now it's happening to you. You are left with five seconds to investigate. Check even your financial life. How your mom used to complain. Is it normal? No. Just because you're a believer, it doesn't mean you're a sanctified sissy. Just because you're a believer, you're like, ah, why? You're a Christian. Understand, accept, shut up. It doesn't work like that. I'm a seed of Abraham. I know what Abraham possessed. And I'm to possess that. And any altar that will stand against me from possessing that, I will destroy, I will demolish are we done? Now, so I want you right now. Are you listening to me? I want you right now. Did you do what I told you to do? Amen. To register everything in your mind. I'm going to give you an instruction on how we are going to destroy that. Uh, uh, today I have wrong people. I'm going to give you an instruction to say this is how we are going to destroy that. Amen. Be seated. Be seated. I want you wherever you are to take a pen and a paper. Listen to me very carefully. If you don't have a paper, uh, you don't have a paper. At all. It's finished. Pastor um, Paul will give you a paper. So help somebody. I want somebody, everybody, 
to have a paper. It does not a phone because what I'm telling you, you're not going to do it in a phone. Instruction. Your inability to follow instructions will bring distraction. But your ability to follow instruction will bring construction in your life. So a paper, not a tablet. So share if you have papers, just give somebody paper and give somebody paper. And just share with your brothers, share with your sister, just give somebody a paper. Kula Brasila, Mene Mene Mansula Kabaha, Mene Mene Sito, Mene Mene Haga. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Menembre. Iboya. Are we still live on Facebook? We're still live on YouTube. And those that are watching on Facebook and YouTube, do exactly what we are telling you to do here. Do exactly what we are telling you to do. Because you are following. So, see to it. Uh, go ahead, share the broadcast. Tell, share, it, share it seven times if you are watching me right now. Share it seven times. Seven times. I don't know why seven times, but share it seven times. So, take a pen, take a paper. Are we all ready? I told you last week, this is what's going to happen. Some of you, you forgot. No problem. Oh, you didn't forget. I told you last week. Now, I want you to write. Do you hear that one way or the other? Delay. Be it stagnation. Be it confusion. You know, your children. Not coping at school. Not being able to, to excel, so to say. Be it your life. Not having direction. Directionless. So to say, history, we are a people, great and strong. Today, it's altar versus altar, and the less one will bow. Write it down. And those who are watching at home, do what we are telling you to do right now. Do what I'm saying you must do right now. Somebody saying, I'm watching from Canada. L right in Canada, do what I'm telling you to do. Because that person might be in Canada, but I... Pirazu Mene hezo brakila hasuva kahaya Meli brosatiga baha And I want to give you days after this. Ha <laughs> ha we have arrived in Midland with the spirit of power, with the spirit of dominion, with the spirit of God. We have arrived. A general is in town. And all monkeys must go back to the trees. Monkeys that torments people with diseases, with sickness, with poverty, must go back where they belong. If you are done, it doesn't mean others are done. So be patient. Go ahead, write, write, write. If you are watching online and you have written something down, just say done. If you are done online. Write. Write, write, everybody, write. Sometimes when you give prophetic instructions, people think we are joking. People think we are joking. We are not joking. We are not joking. Woman, as you are writing there, woman, woman, is it your first time to come here? If it's not your first time to come here, write everything. I see the Lord doing a new thing in you. Write everything. Put it down. Every single thing. Every single thing. Okay, you are left with uh, 30 seconds. Some of you, no wonder why they always finished the exam and took your papers. 
you are writing like, uh, I don't know what's happening. Write fast. Don't write things that are not there. Don't write cars. Cars are not your problem. Write serious issues that you are able to trace. That you are able to trace. Did you write? Are you guys done? Not yet. If you are done, say I'm done. If you are not yet done, say not yet. Hurry up. Hurry up. <laughs> you know, there are people when you do this, the spirit of God leaves them. When you keep quiet, it's more like they channel the spirit of God. They put the spirit of God in gears. Say, no, when I'm quiet like this, I don't feel the same spirit. You are crazy. So in fact, the spirit of God does, does not work on how loud we are, but how obedient we are. Keep on writing those that are writing. Last week, I told the lady about what happened in her life. And while I was talking to her, I said to her, your issue is not your mother. She was hating the mother. She was like, Apostle, I, I know whenever I tell my mother something, it does not go well. I don't know if my mother talks to wrong people or not, but if anything happens in my life, we're on one-on-one, -on -one. anything in my life, the moment I tell my mom, I know for some reasons it won't go well. So I don't know if I should continue to tell my mom my problems, my, my things, even when I have an interview or something good is about to happen. The moment I mention it to my mother, it does not happen. But if I keep it to myself, something good happens, then I tell her, it always happens good. So should I stop telling my mom things that are coming or right in my life? I said, the problem is not your mother. It's the man you met in the year 2005. And her jaw dropped like this. And I began to speak the mind of God. And as I spoke the mind of God, immediately, a demon checked out. And it was a spirit from that guy's family that was monitoring and tormenting the life of this lady. Do you hear what I'm saying? There are things in our lives that unless they are dealt with, we'll just do things on the... On the, on, the, on the, you see a tree, you need to uproot it from the roots. If you cut it, it will come back. So some people, church on Sunday, it's like cutting a tree, but they don't understand that we need to go to the roots. Are you done? Okay. For now, you're not doing anything, right? This is a prophetic instruction. What? Prophetic instruction. Every ministry of Jesus, healing, deliverance, was based on instruction. Look for it, you'll find it. Anything, think about it now. Any miracle, there was an instruction right there. I know most people don't see an instruction in Jesus healing Jeria's daughter, the one who was dead. There was an instruction. Jesus said, all of you, wait here. Peter, John, James, Ariel. That was an instruction. <laughs> Are you listening to me? Yet when he raised the Lazarus from the dead, he didn't say, all of you, wait here. He took all the crowd and all the family and everybody to the tomb. But to Jeria's daughter, he said, everybody stop here. Peter, John, James, family, you stand here. But the rest of my disciples, let's go in. Why? Because of instruction. And when he got there, he didn't say, uh, daughter, come up. Say, Talita, come in. Why using that language to raise somebody? He's Jesus. You'll have said, come back to life. Stop joking. But he's used the language was one thing. Right now, we are about to deal with those foundations in a very prophetic way. That you look back and wonder, did they even, uh, did, did, did they, they even existed or they were in my mind? Yet they existed, but because you are seeing the hand of God in your life, you'll wonder what happened. That small paper that you have written, it must not be in the book. You must remove it from the book. Because that's what I said last week, isn't it? A paper. 
I'm about to give you a prophetic instruction. Are you listening to what I'm saying? I'm about to give you what? A prophetic instruction. And those that are at home, you must do exactly what we say. Altar, this is what? An altar. Altar, this is altar. If it's an altar of prayer, sacrifice yourself in prayer. Did you hear what I just said? If it's an altar of prayer, what makes an altar strong, go left, go right, it's a sacrifice. We are saved by a sacrifice and a covenant. Praise the Lord, everybody. We can say erect an altar of prayer and you pray one minute and you think you are... Mm. Stop joking with spiritual stuff. The higher the sacrifice, the stronger the altar. Understand that. If it's financial issues, sacrifice. The higher the sacrifice, the stronger the altar. Do you know that people who are behind your life, they sacrifice? Oh, you're joking me. They will do anything to see to it that it doesn't happen in your life. Now, I want to give a serious instruction. Somebody's ringtone is, is ministering while it's a ministering. Can, can we try to stop the nice ringtone? That's a very nice ringtone. Uh, I don't know if my phone will allow it to receive it. Maybe you can send me that ringtone using airdrop. It's a nice one. I like it. But for now, let's switch it off. Now, watch this. Are you, are you ready? Yes. I'm going to give what? You see this young boy here. Bring this young boy here. This young boy. This Alone. Let him come alone. Show him to me. This young boy. Don't be scared, my boy. <laughs> you just said, huh? Where is the mother of this boy? Or you came with only you, with the, with, the, with, the, with the baby. Where is the mother? Where is the mother? Where? What place? Captain Park. You see, the instruction that I'm about to give, I want this baby boy to be here. And this baby boy will be a testimony to what I'm about to say. The mother of this baby boy is not here today. But hopefully the mother will watch or the mother will, however, receive this message. Four, five, six, seven. About seven years ago, this mic is too loud. About seven years ago, somebody was crossed with the mother of this baby boy. I don't know this, the mother of this baby boy. I've never met the mother of baby boy. And if I'm lying, the mother can come on Sunday and say, you are lying, prophet. The mother of this baby boy got crossed with somebody. Do you hear what I'm saying? And that person went to another place in Zimbabwe and tried to do something on the mother. Watch this. I'm going to go deeper. Just give me time. Went to Mozambique and did something. But in the person's doing, it was so that the mother of this baby boy, number one, does not have marriage, number one. Number two, the Bible says children are a blessing from the Lord. But she never wanted to see the mother of this baby boy. This baby boy's birth 
It's a miracle. The enemy wanted to even remove this baby boy. But there is an anointing upon this baby boy. How old are you? How old are you? Six. You are six. He's a baby boy. You won't understand what I'm saying. Seven years ago, somebody went to an unholy place. So that the mother of this baby boy does not anything in her life. Watch this now. To an extent that before this baby boy came, there was a problem with her cycle. Something strange was happening to her, the mother of this baby boy. But this baby boy here is anointed. <laughs> you see, what neutralized, not destroyed, neutralized the power of the enemy that was sent upon the mother of this baby boy is the God in this baby boy. You see, when you read the Bible, God is called El. 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 Right? When you see E-L, that's symbolic to the name of God. Do you have a name? What's your name? Emmanuel. Yeah? Emmanuel. Ooh. Emmanuel. 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 God with us. The God in this boy neutralized every single power of the enemy. I'm telling you, and even for her to be still here today, it's because God looked at this baby boy. I don't know who the woman uh, um, really, really, what did she do for the person to be crossed? But I could hear a name being called. A name, a very, it sounds like a name of a man, but it's not a name of a man. Because if you go to Heli, the priest, it's something else. Do you know your mom's name? You don't know your mom's name? What's the mother's name? Huh? Huh? Angela. Do you call her Angela? What do you call her? I hear people calling and people calling and people calling. Then I see another altar. I don't know if it's, in, our, in my language, this sounds like alcohol. You know, when you say dollar or something. Then there is another altar from this side speaking. Then there is another one from this woman that I'm talking about speaking. But today I'm going to pray for this baby boy. And whatever is happening in the mother's life, you're not hearing what I'm saying, people. This baby boy is anointed by God. This baby boy. What's his name? Do you know his name? What's the, what's the surname of this baby boy? Kapea. The surname of the mother is also the same. Okay. But uh, the husband, the husband, surname. Kapea. What's your surname? Huh? Like Jala or something. Okay. Okay. So the mother of the baby boy here is not here and the father is not here today. Okay. But there is an altar again from the Jala. Sorry if I don't pronounce it right. Speaking. Because this baby boy right here has an anointing upon his life. But there is something that has been done. 
But today, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I'm just going to pray for you, baby boy. Ne? And as I pray for you, my boy, God is going to touch you. Amen. Just lift up your hands. Lift up your hands. Just lift up your hand. There we go. You're such a brilliant young man. <laughs> Let's stretch our hands upon just towards him. Father, we thank you for this young man. Holy Spirit, walk with this young man. Be with this young man. Strengthen him. Guide him. Lead him. Teach him the ways of the Lord. And set him on the path of righteousness. In the name of Jesus. So that through him, what you have to fulfill may be fulfilled. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. You can go, my Put your hands together for Jesus. I feel like talking. But some of you, you take things very light. Very light, like very light. You see, I'm looking at right there. You see where grace is. Yeah, I, no, don't worry. You, you don't have to just listen to what I'm saying. The person will confirm it. Because if you turn your head like this, you break your heads. You can, you can look, no problem. No problem. But where grace is, right next to you, I'm seeing a, a giant, like a giant, right next to you. But this giant is not watching over you. He's watching over her. You see, you're standing next to her, right? She's sitting down, right? Be, just next to you, there is a giant. And this spirit, I see a name. I see fire living, my, my son here, going to that. And this is like Peter or something. But it's a big giant in the realms of the spirit. And this is a spirit that has been following a man called Peter that followed his father, that followed his father's father, that it's standing behind. Okay, no problem. Let me leave it. She's not saying anything. No problem. So I might maybe be not saying anything. I can look at this woman here right now and tell you things that she does not see. Praise the Lord, everybody. Papa, Peter is the father to my son. Prophesy, Major. Okay. Thank you. Please be seated. You see, there is, that's where everything, as I'm standing like this, I'm seeing, that's where everything, I'm not saying your life does not make sense, but that's where everything went wrong. To an extent that, uh, I don't know, I don't know, but I'm seeing like a uniform of, is it a cop or something? Or, or security or something? He's a policeman, baby. But, listen to me. That's where everything and until it's reversed to go there, to go here, there are things that will never make sense. Are you having your, you don't, you don't want me to prophesy, it's okay. Do something, Do you major. have your papers? Because if I prophesy calmly like this, it's like you're not getting it. If I was shouting and I was making you stand and you'd be screaming, no problem. Talk to me, mate. Accuracy without relevancy, it's a waste of time. So we don't prophesy to entertain. We speak issues that people know about them in their hearts. That's where everything went wrong. And the problem, let me tell you something. Somebody in the family of that individual went there and the first thing that they did was not this one, but we wanted that one. And from there, I see a spirit of anger coming upon this guy. That no matter what, something is, you know when you are always wrong, even when you are not wrong, but wrong because of anger. And it's somebody, true, close, somebody close to him said, no, we don't want uh, Leah. We want Rachel. 
we want this one. But because there is a spirit that has been following this guy, that spirit was attached to her everywhere she went. And sometimes, that's why some of you, you don't understand why you are angry at yourself. Because when we separate you with this foundation, we are separating your child with this foundation. To an extent that, this, watch this now. To an extent that from that, you move to another level like this. When you move to another level, I wish I could go deeper. <laughs> Do you have your paper? Oh, yes. Do you have your paper? Oh, yes. Everybody with their paper. Do you have your paper? Oh, yes. And this is what I'm going to tell you to do. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. I'm going to tell you what to do. Fold it if you can. Uh, I wish I had a paper. Just fold it. Fold it like this. And fold it again 30 times. And then fold it again just three times. It must fold three times, no matter what. It must fold three times. Did you fold it three times? Not five times. Follow an instruction. Three times. I told you last week we are going to do this this week, today. And I've been praying about this. So whatever we are doing here is very prophetic. You will see some, of peop some people here, the power of God will touch them. Some, some people, demons will just literally come out after we do this. So what I want you to do is hold that paper. Hold that paper. Hold it. Hold it like this. Like you're about to tear it. Hold it. You're not holding a mic, so it won't be difficult for you. So if you're holding something, put it down so that you can hold that. And wait. Don't do anything. Just wait. Don't do anything. After I say do it, you do it. Don't do anything. So you're going to, watch this, tear that paper. Not now. Wait. You're going to tear that paper. One, you're going to tear it one and you combine it again. You tear it and you combine it again and three times. Okay, let me say it again. The same paper, when I give you a go ahead, you are going to tear it, not now, wait. You're going to tear it once, like tear it. You can see the other piece and the other piece. Then you bring it together. You turn it. You tear it again for the second time. Then you combine it. Then you tear it for the last time. How many times are you tearing it? Three times. One more time. Talk back to me. How many times are you tearing it? Three times. So I'm going to pray. And as soon as I've prayed, as you tear up that paper, you're not listening to what I'm saying here. As you tear up that paper, you are tearing every foundation that you have traced. You are tearing and bringing down and destroying every foundation that you have traced and by the power of the Holy Spirit and by the fire of God is going to be consumed. Are you listening to what I'm saying? And of course, as soon as you, have, you, are, you are done with, as soon as you have uh, 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 teared it in three pieces, I will tell you what to do. I want to pray right now. Close your eyes if you can. Even if you didn't lift up your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come into agreement today. In one faith, in one accord, and in one spirit. As we have written everything that we have traced from now to where we come from, as far as we could go, and we have written everything down, I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost that as we tear up, and anybody under the sound of my voice, as they tear up the paper, they are tearing that foundation. That foundation is being destroyed. That foundation is being demolished. That foundation is being deleted. In the name of Jesus, I declare by the authority of the Holy Ghost that any altar that has been altering their lives, 
altering their children. Powering habits and behaviors that are ungodly. That altar will be teared down today. In the name of Jesus, we stand against any altar that empowers the altar that stands against us. We even go to that one that empowers other altars. And we are tearing it down by the authority of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. I declare that angels right now are embarking are on an assignment are dispatched to search for altars that we know nothing about. Altars that we could not trace ourselves. Angels are embarking, are dispersed to search for those altars. In the name of Jesus and angels, when you find any altar, destroy it by the fire of God. Altar of diseases, lack of progress, poverty, spirit of anti-marriage, in the name of Jesus, lack of happiness and lack of joy, lack of stability and financial progress. In the name of Jesus, and angels that are with us right here, as we tear, make sure that those altars are being teared. See to it that there is no trace. We separate ourselves from any foundation in the name of Jesus. Say that is so. Are we ready? I'm going to count to three. And as I count to three, then you tear it. It doesn't matter how fast you do it. It's up to you. But as long as you have gotten the instruction, hence I'm not trying to be in a hurry. I want you guys to get it. So as long as you have gotten the instruction, so as soon as I count to three, whether you are speaking in tongues, whether you are praying, whether you are saying in the name of Jesus, whatever comes to your spirit, utter it. When you say it is done, say it is done. When you say it's no more, wh whatever comes to your spirit, utter it. Are you ready? Yes. One, are you ready? Yes. Two, are you ready? Yes. Three, tear that paper. Tear that paper. Tear that paper. Tear that paper. Three times, not five times. Some of you are tearing and tearing and to follow instruction. It's not just bathing in the river that healed Naman. It was a specific river instruction. And Jesus said, sit down. And when they sat down, and then he multiplied the instruction. 